Well, hello, everyone. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am to be here. Um, as Matt just said, this is our fifth Summit for Space Sustainability. We started in 2018 in Washington, DC, rolled with the punches for two years of online COVID, and then came out in a blaze of glory last year in London with our partners, the UK Space Agency, and a number of others. And we're incredibly excited to be here in New York this year. We really wanted to delve into some of the most pressing and important topics in space sustainability. Um, so this week, or these Tuesdays, we're going to be talking about everything from responsibility and sustainability and how that drives corporate performance. We're going to be looking at international space governance. We're going to be looking at lunar and cislunar themes for space sustainability and many others. So again, I want to start off by welcoming all of our folks in the room as well as our audience online. We have more than 500 registrants. And so you will have lots of opportunities to get to know each other, to meet each other. I welcome you to take the time, enjoy our breakfast, our networking breaks, our lunches, as well as our happy hour that's gonna to be tonight to really take advantage of this community that we've brought together to talk about these issues in space sustainability. In terms of basic announcements today, I wanna to start off with one of my favorites. Um, Secure World Foundation has partnered with the UK Space Agency as well as SGAC this year to host a scholarship competition. And so we have awarded seven young professionals from around the world with the opportunity to come here in New York, all expenses paid, and to participate in this event. So I want to congratulate, you can see their names and pictures on the board. I encourage you to talk to them, reach out to them this week. We are incredibly excited to be hosting this group of young professionals. And in fact, one of our biggest goals for this event is to make it welcoming to young professionals. We have over 50 young professionals who are actually in the audience, and then another 50, actually it's closer to 70, online. So please, as you in network, think about that, share your experiences, and uh, talk to our excited participants. I do have a bit of housekeeping. So uh, you all found your way here. So we've got the first one, nobody went to the wrong convene, which I'm really happy about. So far, I haven't heard of it anyway. Um, our other housekeeping is everybody's gonna ask what the Wi-Fi is. You can see it on the screen. It's on uh, signs all around the building. Don't worry, we have lots of good Wi-Fi. Um, and the other thing I wanna remind you is that we will be using our online app and portal for quite a bit of our activities. So that's what you registered on. That's where we will be doing our live Q&A during our panel and other sessions. That's also where you can network, search our database for who else is attending, and get to know each other, share articles, et cetera. So I absolutely encourage you to either access that via the web portal or download the app on your phone. And the last thing that I would be remiss uh, before we move on is I want to thank our sponsors. Secure World is a private um, operating foundation. We could not do this without the help of a number of interested organizations. And I want to highlight the depth and breadth of our sponsors, from government agencies to think tanks to corporations to startups. We really think that this demonstrates the importance of space sustainability around the globe and into an incredibly diverse audience. So again, thank you to our sponsors who are absolutely integral for us being here today. And with that, I'm going to introduce you to Peter Martinez, Secure World Foundation's Executive Director, who will be introducing our incredibly exciting opening keynote. Peter? Thank you, Crystal. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to all of you, whether you've made the short commute across Manhattan or traveled halfway around the world to be with us here this morning. Thank you for taking the time and making the effort to join us here in person. And to our participants who are joining us online, a warm welcome from us here in New York to you. Thank you all for joining this event online. A special welcome also to all of our partners and sponsors without whom this event would not be possible. In particular, we would like to thank our anchor sponsors, the UK Space Agency, the US Department of Commerce, and the US State Department. This summit builds on our previous summit, which was held in London a year ago, and we're delighted once again to partner with the UK Space Agency this year to build on those discussions. We're also delighted to renew our relationship with our other existing partners and to forge new partnerships this year to advance the global discussion of space sustainability. The space arena, as you all know, is evolving at a breathtaking pace. And since last year's summit, there have been a number of major space developments. 
The traditional areas of launch, satellite communications, and Earth observation are all experiencing significant and rapid change, led by the commercial sector. Existing business models are evolving and new ones are emerging, and this is attracting the interest of non-space industries and new kinds of investors. All of these developments present great opportunities, but they also raise concerns for the long-term sustainability of space activities. Because the existing systems of government, governance that we have today were developed during an era when space activities were the preserve of a few nations and the operators of space systems were mostly state entities. The existing international legal framework for space activities developed in the 1960s and 1970s has served us very well for the past 60 years, but we now need to adapt and strengthen that framework so that it can be applied to new situations and circumstances that were not envisaged a few decades ago. The United Nations recognizes the governance challenges posed by the rapidly evolving space arena and is addressing this issue at the highest levels. In 2021, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, issued a report titled Our Common Agenda, which discusses the need to strengthen international cooperation to find multilateral solutions to some of the global challenges facing humanity. Among the challenges identified in the report of the Secretary General was the challenge of cooperative governance of space activities. The Secretary General has called for a summit of the future, which will be held in 2024. In preparation for the summit, the Secretary General recently issued a series of policy briefs. One of these, Policy Brief 7, deals with the future of space governance, and I'm delighted that we have a representative of the Secretary General's office here today to discuss this policy brief with us as a way of setting the scene for our discussions here over the next two days. Speaking of the UN, another significant development that has taken place since last year's summit for space sustainability in London was the passing of General Assembly Resolution 77-41 last December. This resolution, which was passed by an overwhelming majority of 155 states, calls on states to commit not to conduct destructive direct ascent anti-satellite missile tests in space, and it considers such a commitment to be an urgent initial measure aimed at preventing damage to the outer space environment while also contributing to the prevention of, of an arms race in outer space. To date, 13 states have made the commitment called for in this General Assembly resolution, and we hope that a steady stream of states will join their ranks over time to make this an emerging international norm to safeguard the safety, stability, and security of the Earth's orbit orbital environment. From our side at Secure World Foundation, we would like to commend those states that have made such a commitment, many of which are represented by members of the audience here today and online. And we'd like to call upon other countries that have not yet made this commitment to consider doing so. We attach great importance to this issue, which is why we will have several spotlight talks from government and industry leaders devoted to this topic over the next two days. Our other sessions will touch on what the space community can learn from internet governance, the investment landscape for space and how responsible investment can help to enable space sustainability. We will also look at the future of military space activities and discuss how space security is everybody's problem. Industry is also making huge strides in developing best practices, standards and norms to promote space safety and space sustainability. We will hear from a number of industry representatives on the steps being taken to promote ESG in space. We will also have a series of 10-minute pitches presenting viewpoints and ideas on roles that particular elements of the commercial economy could play in addressing or mitigating space sustainability challenges. And these pitches will be followed by judges' reactions and audience voting, and I encourage you all to participate in that. We'll also look at the role of empowering regulation that supports innovation in space and discuss what is likely to happen on the moon and in cislunar space over the next decade and what kind of governance questions this raises. So, as you can see, we will touch on a wide range of topics all under the general rubric of space sustainability. 
But this is not just a discussion among the panelists and keynote speakers. We want you, the audience, both in person and online, to engage in the conversations. You will be able to pose questions and to participate in opinion polls through the Hoover app, and we encourage you to take advantage of these opportunities to participate in these discussions and debates.